Hello everyone and welcome to my introductory guide on the Geothermal Heat Pump, a new POI building in the Frosty Planet Pack DLC that can be found on the Ceres planet. The POI will generate on the bottom of the map just above the magma biome, sometimes offset to the side. Along with the main building, you'll find three artificial geovents scattered around the area. One of them is blocked and needs to be cleared as part of the geothermal task list before it is usable. All you need to do to get started is click on the geothermal heat pump, activating the full steam ahead questline, thus already completing the first task of discovering the power plant. To reconnect the geothermal heat pump, you don't have to physically build any pipes. Instead, your duplicants need to fetch 1200 kilos of steel, prompted by clicking the reconnect heat pump button. And with that, the geothermal heat pump is primed. To make it operational, you have to reconnect it with the geo vents you want to use. Access an unblocked vent and press the reconnect button, prompting your duplicants to activate it. Now the vent is ready and the geothermal heat pump usable. So what does it do? The main building has three liquid input pipes and an internal storage holding 12 tons of liquid. The inputs do not correspond to the individual geo vents, but rather are a way to fill the machine faster. If you input different liquids, they will mix in the internal storage and get vented together. The heat pump will display the amount of liquid inside and its average temperature. Once it is full, the next task is complete and you have to activate the power plant. Then all the connected geo vents start outputting the liquid 150 degrees hotter than the input temperature was, alongside some debris, liquids and gases. Although the debris has the same animation as meteors, it will not damage any of your buildings. It's best to already have the infrastructure in place with which you want to harness the geo vent or else you'll end up with a mess like me. I will show you one of the many possible setups later in the build section. If only one vent is connected, it will output about 11 tons of the liquid you input earlier. One ton seems to get consumed in order to produce the additional resources and infuse the liquid with heat. If you connect more vents, the liquid will be divided evenly among them. The vents will have to output all the liquid in them before they can receive more from the geothermal heat pump. They overpressure at 120 kilos of gas pressure per tile. What kind of additional resources you receive depends on the temperature of the input liquid. In the description you'll find a link to a reddit post from the user Nigit, because I haven't tested all the temperature ranges myself yet. Before we get into the potential setup to use this new POI, there are a couple of caveats. When inputting liquid at a certain temperature, the additional resources are not selective, but rather additive. Meaning, if you input temperature at 530 degrees, the vents not only output sour gas, but also all the other resources up to that temperature range, in addition to your input liquid. If more than one vent is connected, the additional resources will be spread among them and not duplicated. The second thing to keep in mind are state changes of your input liquid and the additional resources. For instance, if you input water, it will always come out as steam because the geothermal heat pump will add 150 degrees to the liquid. That is also the reason why you may not notice the salt and polluted water and instead only see dirt and salt because they instantly vaporize. To finish the full steam ahead questline, and access the blocked geo vent, your input liquid needs to be hot enough to melt lead. With lead melting at a temperature of 327.5 degrees, your input liquid has to be at least 177.5 degrees hot, since the geothermal heat pump adds the remaining 150 degrees of heat. I would suggest going a little bit over though, to ensure it's hot enough. Remember to prepare the area around the blocked geo vent before you start this process. Also, the input liquid will only be released out of one or both of the other connected vents and the blocked vent will release a set amount of materials. After it is cleared, you can grab your reward and use it like the other two geo vents. With the general info out of the way, let's look at the setup we are going to build today. A little disclaimer before we begin. I want to emphasize that there is a myriad of ways to build this and I'm going to show you one possible setup to get you started. We will only be accessing one geo vent, but if you have a grasp on this setup, 
you can easily expand it yourself and include the other Geo vents when you need more power. Alright, let's have a closer look. The Geo vent in the steam chamber is encased to prevent the debris meteors from flying too far away from our auto sweeper conveyor loader combo. Since we recycle the water, the input liquid's temperature will settle at 95 degrees coming from the steam turbines, giving us igneous rock, granite, obsidian, rust, as well as salt and dirt. The steam turbines produce a total of 7650 watts and are getting cooled by two thermal aqua tuna, reducing the effective net power gain to 5250 watts. In this build I assume that you don't have access to super coolant yet and that your best alternative is nectar. Since the steam will get very hot and settles at around 230 degrees, the steam turbines will need maximum cooling. One thermo aqua tuner with nectar in the cooling loop can keep at the most 6 steam turbines operational if they handle steam at 200 degrees. The reason we run exactly 9 steam turbines is to ensure that the power basically never fluctuates. 8 of them refill the geothermal heat pump with 16 kilos of water per second. This barely does not sync up with the output speed of the geo vent so we need to include an overflow system to prevent interruptions in the power supply. The one steam turbine not feeding the geothermal heat pump outputs its water back into the steam chamber to keep the steam in a reasonable temperature range of around 230 degrees. Steam turbines generate their maximum amount of power with steam at 200 degrees. Anything lower will decrease power gain. Anything higher does not generate more power and puts additional strain on the cooling loop. So why is 9 the magic number? If you run less, the recycled water doesn't fill the geothermal heat pump quickly enough, stalling the system until it catches up again and therefore cuts the power for this duration. If you run more and pump the water of the additional turbines into the steam chamber, the steam cools down too much, causing all the turbines to produce power at reduced capacity. I have to admit that I didn't run definitive tests here. This setup is supposed to be your entry into harnessing the geothermal heat pump and it is by far just a fraction of what the building is capable of. However, this build can be achieved once you have access to nectar, plastic and steel. And in my opinion, it comes at the perfect time to help you scale your power production for the mid-game. Speaking of the materials you need, the big breakpoints are 4000 kilos of steel, including the 1200 you need for the geothermal heat pump, and 1800 kilos of plastic alongside all the other building materials. The last component we need is an additional source of water to top up the steam chamber whenever necessary. With the preview out of the way, let's get started on how to build this setup step by step. Make sure your geothermal heat pump is primed with steel and the vent connected, but don't start pumping liquid yet. First we build the structure, which is 35 tiles long and 17 tiles high. The vent is positioned 18 tiles from one side and 14 tiles from the other. If you don't have enough space around your vent, you can also change the positions of the turbines to one side. Start by vacuuming out the whole area. Then prepare the floors with three tile spaces in between them. Construct the steel auto sweeper and conveyor loader with a rail leading out and build two liquid vents on top with igneous rock insulated pipes leading in. The vents are in this position, so the incoming cooler water can soak heat from the aqua tuners. We build now out of steel. Place down the nine steam turbines, as well as the four transformers, and the liquid reservoir with the liquid shutoff. Then connect everything with wires, heavy watt for the turbines, and conductive wire for the utility machines. Steel wires aren't necessary because the temperature in the steam room will not exceed 250 degrees. Build an atmos sensor, connect it to the liquid shutoff and set it to send a green signal when the ambient pressure drops below 20 kilos. Then prepare the cooling loop on both sides and install the liquid pipe thermo sensors above the aqua tuners before filling them with nectar. Next up, we prepare the insulated pipes leading out of the steam turbines. The turbine at the very top leads straight back into the steam chamber and the others are combined as two groups of four. Make sure to include the liquid bridges, which act as an overflow. Close the middle of the room with mesh tiles and insulated tiles, deconstruct the ladders on the sides and replace them with insulated tiles. 
Then briefly remove the steam turbines as well as one tile above the two bottom transformers and place down bottle emptiers. Have your duplicants fetch 200 kilos of nectar per bottle emptier on the lower floor and 600 kilos of nectar for the bottle emptier up top. After the liquid drop down to the two bottom transformers, close up the tile and fetch another 200 kilos for the left side again. Then remove the bottle emptiers and reconstruct the steam turbines. Close off the section with the liquid shutoff and open it on the other side, so we don't have to include this part into the cooling loop. Prepare the two pipe runs leading to the geothermal heat pump and have your dupes disable all the steam turbines. Then fill the geothermal heat pump with 12 tons of water. This can be regular, polluted or salt water of any temperature. Once the 12 tons are in, activate the geothermal heat pump and watch the fireworks. Set your conveyor loader to accept granite, igneous rock, obsidian, dirt, salt and rust. Also set the liquid pipe thermal sensors to send a green signal if the liquid is above 70 degrees. You can get away with a higher number, but I built my transformers out of copper, so they overheat at 75 degrees. Then fill another 12 tons of water into your geothermal heat pump. Disconnect the feeding pipes once all the liquid is in and connect the two pipe runs coming from your power plant. Just before the vent has released all the input liquid from before, activate the steam turbines again. And with that your geothermal heat pump power plant is finished. It takes a couple of cycles to get up to 100% capacity, but when it does, you have almost input free power at your disposal. As always, here's the cheat sheet for this build and again the reminder to check out the reddit post in the description for more detailed numbers. I will definitely do follow up videos on the geothermal heat pump because there are a lot of cool things you can do with it. Thank you very much for watching and until the next one. Bye!